This is NDTV. And you are watching NDTV Prime. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Anu Subramanian, and you're watching On Art. Now, when we talk about the pantheon of Indian art, we're often talking about the masters of modern art, F.M. Souza, M.F. Hussain, S.H. Reza. Now, these people lifted Indian art and in many ways put it on the global stage. So today, we're paying homage to the artists and their contemporaries through three very different stories. One about an auction that is focused on these works, one through an interview by one of the greatest living modern masters from India, and then by seeing how students pay tribute to these artists by painting on a car. It's gonna be a wonderful episode, keep watching. This is On Art. Auction House is the world's largest auction house, and they have two auctions in India every year. Both are coming up on December 18th in Mumbai. At the auction preview, we caught up with some of the Christie specialists and asked them about their predictions for the upcoming auction. The wonderful Monet Haystack here from 1891. 30. In December 2015, Christie's Auction House raked in 97 crore rupees at its India sale, breaking the world record for auction revenue earned at any auction held in India. This year, Christie's hopes to best this record with its fourth annual India sales on December 18th. We're at the Taj Mahal Hotel in Delhi. Um, we have a preview of our works that are coming up for auction on the 18th of December. It's a smaller section of the works. Um, it's 40 lots that we're showing. It's a combination of both classical uh, Indian art, which includes the miniatures, you know, the smaller format paintings and sculptures and a few bronzes. You know, the low estimate for the, the auction is 52 crores. Last year, our low estimate, I believe, was about 42 crores, and we, or, or say 50 with the, with the classical section, and we um, achieved just under 100 crores. It was 98 crores was the hammer, including buyer's premium. So if I get a result like that, I'd be delighted. I think that makes the, the year end very good. The modern and contemporary art sale features 73 lots, which is auction speak for works, with some tremendous works by top auction performers like Vasudeo Gaitonde, Tayab Mehta, and M.F. Hussain. Modern painter Bhupen Kakkar, whose life and work was recently commemorated with a major retrospective at the Tate Modern Museum in London, also had several works on display. Last year, a Gaitonde oil painting garnered 29 crore rupees at the auction. This year, two Gaitonde paintings are among the estimated top earners. The classical art sale, featuring works that are hundreds of years old, fetch lower prices than the modern works and often require a deeper cultural education to be appreciated. Says Amin Jaffer, Christie's International Director of Asian Art. We have a sale devoted to classical art, which is miniature painting, stone and bronze sculpture. And this is a really important market. Uh, it's, uh, you know, with the prices of modern art having risen so substantially, people who are interested in, in the visual arts of South Asia are beginning to step back and say, hang on, look at the amazing value that exists for Indian antiquities. These are things that have sometimes lasted millennia, you know, that have stood the test of time, that have originality, authenticity, that really reflect the narrative culture of, of India and yet available relatively reasonably when you compare it with a, with a modern master. When you look at a contemporary work of art, because it reflects our times, it's relatively easy for us to read. But when it's something that was made for 16th century viewer or 12th century viewer, we have to get into the mind of those people, the audience of the time. We have to understand the symbolism, the materials, the iconography, the techniques, the context for production. Um, but, you know, that acquiring that knowledge is a wonderful journey. 46 million dollars. 47 million. 
Auctions often guide global expectations and appetites for certain artists. When works by a certain artist sell at high prices, other collectors might also become keen to own that artist's work. Christie's Auction House celebrates its 250th anniversary this year. The auction house has been operating in India since 1994. We are the only international auction houses, our house that is having an auction in India at the moment. Um, when the other other players come in, we'll we'll then know whether we were uh, we were lucky and came in earlier. As you can see, auction season is in full swing. It's also art fair season, festival season, gallery opening season, and that's why it was so hard for us to pick out just a few events to feature this week. But these ones look especially promising. Here are some upcoming events happening in the art world across the country. Delhi, head to Coach Studios in Kidki Extension to see Frozen World of the Familiar Stranger, a group show of videos, performance art, and installations by 10 Indian and international artists, which delves into the subject of urban alienation and isolation. Hyderabad, you don't want to miss Anushka Shankar live in concert Land of Gold. The legendary sitar player and composer will perform her album live in concert alongside many well-known international musicians playing on the drums, piano, and shanai. It takes place December 11th at 7 p.m. Bengaluru, head to that comedy club, Bengaluru's first comedy club, to see two nights of stand-up comedy December 10th and 11th. Delhi, head to Visual Arts Gallery from December 9th to the 31st to see Ashim Ghosh's latest invention called Illum, Light in its Element. The show offers a unique technique of creating dynamic artworks that break into animation from a static state when subjected to specific light signals. And finally, Kochi, the time is here for the Kochi Museries Biennale. The contemporary art exhibition held every two years is back and it is bigger than ever. Artists from around the world display their works, perform, and convene at Fort Kochi for the biggest contemporary art event in India. It takes place from December 12th to March 29th, 2017. This next story is one that I'm especially excited to share with you. On Art had the distinct honor to sit down with artist Krishan Kanna and talk about his life and works that are currently on display at the Saffron Art Gallery at the Claridges in New Delhi. Now, Krishan Kanna has worked for decades across mediums and created some of the most memorable works that exist in Indian art. Let's see what he told us in an interview at Saffron Art. Krishan Kanna, the artist has produced some of India's most important works of art paintings with a rapidly pulsating heartbeat inside of them, whirring with joy. We met Krishan Kanna at the Saffron Art Auction House's new viewing space at the Claridge's Hotel in New Delhi, where his work was on display at their inaugural exhibition. The Indian tradition, what matters is the image that you carry. When you see and you go around, you have to see very carefully. And you see, and the image stays, just as the image of the partition has stayed with me, you know, the Mahabharata has stayed with me. So it is the imagery which is created in the mind or the back of the mind, its relationship to your ability to be able to devise, to put it down. And when you can't say, when you, when you get stuck, when you don't know what next is going to happen, you have to think. I was always drawn to art. I mean, even as a child, I was drawing, and my father was very keen on drawing himself. And my father had lost his arm when he was a child. Uh, so he was using his left hand to do everything, really. He lost his right arm when he was about four years old. Huh? But and then he taught me how to draw. After spending 14 years working at Grindley's Bank in Mumbai, Krishan Khanna decided to switch careers. Thankfully, he had the emotional and financial support of his wife. I had to choose. I had to choose between painting and banking. Now, when I was in Bombay, it was my good fortune that I got to know within the first week of getting there. Nearly all the painters uh, 
that mattered. The day I left the bank, Hussain Gaitonde and Bal Chowdhury, and so, they were at the gates uh, urging me to come out, you know. People say, why did I paint Ban Wallace? And the answer is they're there. And they have a history. I mean, they come from a situation which was the, the British band on Sunday afternoons used to play in the bandstand. And the Saab and Mehem Saab used to come from church and then go there and listen to nice tunes being played. It was a nice way to spend a Sunday morning with them. Now, when it, when it finishes and they come back and, and then and we get it, now what are, these, what are these poor guys going to do? They're waiting for the wedding season. They're playing tunes which are not known to them. And, but it's a struggle, you know, wearing all these costumes and so on and all this thing. Nevertheless, they look very important. They try to look very important. But there's something also awfully sad about the whole thing also, if you really consider it, you know. I don't, A, give any advice. It's not my province to give advice. But um, I think there are a lot of young people who, and, and, and people in the, you know, the people who followed me, followed my generation as it was, not the very young ones, but people follow me, some very brilliant guys who are working there, you know. And they have to find their own route and their own methodologies and so on. I only wish that they, there was some close bonding between them like we had. After the break, we hear a word from Mojarto.com and we see how a car can pay tribute to India's modern masters. Sound too good to be true? Keep watching to find out. On Art, we'll be right back. 